Welcome! E aí, galera, beleza? Bem-vindo à nossa comunidade. Welcome to our community. Hey, what's going on, guys? It is OGC here. Today, we are going to go over the steps in order uh, to do the void successfully. Uh, if you guys follow these tips, and I, I think I've done a video a long time ago about this, uh, with, before like prisms were, were a big thing. Um, if you guys follow these tips, you will be able to go further and complete more in the void um, at a lower core power than uh, what I was able to do as far as like if you look at my void videos from the past. So a lot of that stuff, the, the newer content like uh, for void 136, which seems to be a popular one, like there were no prisms, there wasn't anything like that. So um, I want to do this because uh, I think that if we if we know some of the tips and tricks uh, to really maximize uh, your void efficiency, I think that everybody will be able to progress further in the void if they were not already doing these things. So if you think that you're doing all of it, then watch long, just make sure that you are doing everything. If you haven't seen this type of stuff before, you might have to go back and, and rewind a couple of times. I'll try and do my best to explain it for you guys. So without further ado, uh, let's go try and explain this. So we have the void mirror and this unlocks um, pretty early on in the game, uh, you'll be able to get in there. I think it's like castle level seven or 10 or something. Um, it's been uh, like a thousand days since I was there. So I don't quote me on that. Um, <laughs> once you enter into the void, uh, everything that you have gets locked. So whatever um, troops you have, uh, whatever dragon you're using, whatever prism setups you're, you, you have, everything gets locked once you go into the void. So uh preparation is everything you want to make sure that when you enter it, everything is all set up exactly how you want it so uh i'll i'll enter in and i'll, I'll show you guys a, a, a couple couple little things so if we enter inside uh the first thing that we're, we're going to look at is uh borrow troops if you guys have stronger players on, on the server or perhaps there are people out there um, that have troop types that you need, feel free to borrow troops. When you enter the void, you can bring up to three borrowed troops in with you. And as you can see on the top left hand side, we have 60 warlocks, which is two packs of warlocks. Uh, those are actually from Crazy King J. Then we also have snipers and the snipers, they're actually from Super Bob. Uh, we have one pack of snipers. So in total, you can bring in uh, three different uh, units of troops total. You cannot go over that. Um, Next, uh, we'll just take a quick peek at uh, all of our troops in here. Uh, the only one that we're going to really look at is uh, going to be the archers, and that's just for the sake of, of example. So if we look at our archers, our archers have uh, 650,000 attack. Remember that number because that, that's going to be important later on. 650,000 uh, attack. Now. It should be the same thing with, with heroes. So if we go under heroes and uh, let's see if we can find one real quick. We have our Elena and it does not let us see her pr prism setup. Um, that is okay. We will uh, we'll cover the, the prisms, but whatever prism you enter into the void with, uh, that is going to be the prism that is locked onto that hero. As we can see with, with, with the heroes, they get locked in once you enter. Whatever prism setup is, is on them, that is going to be the prism that they are stuck with while you are in this uh, void until the next cooldown is over. So what I would highly recommend doing is enter the void with your full setup uh, exactly how you want as far as your uh, prisms for the battle. So if you want to use prisms uh, that benefit your race or the dragon mage set, whatever it looks like to complete that stage, perhaps the true ruby on, on Nora, uh, make sure you enter with everything set up along those lines. And same thing for troops, make sure you bring the, the appropriate troops. With your dragon, bring the appropriate dragon that you want to deploy on the battlefield. That is going to be super crucial. Uh, just a little tip, if you are a lower level core and you are really high up in, in the void and you're far ahead of everybody else, you might have to change your, your dragon or make a temporary dragon. If you looked at my void uh, 160, we actually made a brand new uh, dragon just for that uh, stage. Uh, it was a little overkill, uh, but th th that basic concept uh, hopefully you guys can take away. So once you enter void, everything is locked in place. Nothing can be changed inside of the void. However, there is something that can be changed. 
Uh, if we remember correctly, the archers actually had 650,000 attacks. So what we can do is we can enter the void. Everything is locked in place. Our dragon is still locked in place, but we can come on the outside and deploy a different dragon. Now the dragon I just deployed actually has four purple skills. The four purple skills offer uh, giant bonuses as, as far as like combat stats of uh, troops. So this one, for example, offers increased attack speed and all of that uh, beautiful stuff. We also have uh, Fortitude and uh, Ferocity, which increase the uh, attack. Also, it increases the health for Fortitude. So we have the four purples. So let's jump back into Void and see what, what's changed. Remember, the dragon that we entered with, which would be our uh, Azul, is still in here. So if we want to go uh, try, try and do a, a battle, it's still going to be our Azur dragon that, that pops up. So our archers had 650,000 attack. Now they are up to 685,000 attack. So just by changing that dragon on the outside to our research slash purple dragon, all of a sudden we get a pretty significant bonus on the inside. The, uh, the attack did go up by about 35,000. However, they also have higher crit rate, they have faster attack speed, and they have higher health. So there's actually more that we can do. Um, the, 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 there's a lot more that, that we can do and probably the biggest thing is we can come inside and find the the appropriate uh, heroes and everything and what we can do is we can actually take the prisms and change the prisms on the outside uh, remember how, how at the, the beginning we were talking about once you enter the void everything gets locked in place uh, so we'll just change a, a, a couple of these uh, prisms over and see how that affects everything on the inside I can already let you know that on the inside, all of the prisms are going to stay exactly the same, um, but the troops and everything, they will change. They will adjust to the new prisms on the outside. So if we hop back inside, we're going to see something that's really, really cool. We can now go under our archers, which remember, they started at 650,000 attack. Then we put out our dragon, they went up to 685,000 attack. Now, just by swapping over a couple prisms, their attack is up to 900,000. Those prisms that we change on the outside um, affect the troops on the inside. However, the prism combinations that we had on our heroes upon entering, those still work. So like that dragon mage set, um, that the dragon ma mage set will still work on, on the inside as long as the hero enters with that prism equipped. On the outside, if you change it to bonus troop attack or whatever that looks like, it will affect your troops on the inside and the, the, the prism that you entered with, which would be the Dragon Mage said, that effect still holds true. This is a game changer if you were not already doing it. Later on this week, we're actually going to get another prism in the game. So this is, uh, the, the more prisms we have and everything, you can get your troops to get some pretty ridiculous and wild stats. And by doing that, that's going to allow you to, to get further in the void. Just as, as a couple uh, little tips that, that I can give you guys that, that can help you. Um, when it comes to, to the void, if you're trying to progress up the void as fast as possible and we're still starting out in the game or we're stuck on a specific stage, don't be afraid to change races. Uh, the only one that's really questionable is Lich, uh, which will be needed for a couple stages if you want to do it super easy. Um, because when you uh, when you change troops to Lich, you if it's a skeleton, you cannot switch them back. They're stuck as skeletons for the rest of their time on Art of Conquest. Uh, however, typically speaking, people will be able to progress much further in the void at a faster rate by being willing to change races. Now, this is something that most people out there might be cringing about, including myself, uh, but it, it's needed uh, to, to beat different sages. All of them have different expectations in order to win, so sometimes swapping races will really help you out. The other big thing is, when it comes to your, your, your prisms uh, in, in entering, depending on the sage, don't be afraid to uh, don't don't be afraid to change your, your prism uh, uh, alignment. Like try out a different uh, combination. So I'll I'll show you one one for uh, example. I have Rufio. He has the wave power on him. Uh, I can enter the void with uh, with, with wave power, right? Uh, and that is really super good overpowered thing for Rufio. We've covered that that in uh, another video. 
But say we, we go to do void 162, and at the top we see it, it says cast no abilities, and that's how we're going to try and beat void 162. Then having the wave prism on Rufio, even entering, is going to be utterly useless because he's not going to be casting any abilities. Yes, he'll have more attack from, from one, one bonus, but he's not going to be casting anything. So what I would recommend is do not be afraid to change around your, your prism uh, combinations and your prism alignments. Uh, so if you're going with humans, uh, perhaps uh, in, in you're doing a stage like this where you're doing no, no abilities, perhaps doing something like Turn the Tide, Tiny Mighty, um, the ones that uh, boost up uh, just humanoid troops, do ones that boost up just, just your melee troops, just your ranged troops, uh, Dragon Mage said, of course. But you can change your, your, your prism uh, alignments in, in your different prism combos because there's no cooldown and there's no penalty to changing it itself. So don't be afraid to um, customize your prisms for a specific void stage. Same thing with your heroes. Don't be afraid to, to change around uh, the, their equipments and, and everything else. So I get super lazy with this, um, but for the most part, my, my core will carry, carry me through some, some of the void stages and that makes me lazy. But say I'm going in, into the void as self and I don't have any range units, then there's absolutely no reason to have the ring on Avalon. Like, I'm better off putting a plus one to a Warhorn. So, don't be afraid to do that. When you go into the Void, the stat bonuses, uh, yes, they, there's uh, some benefit to having really high might on, on Jax, but having those plus one to important skills is going to be uh, imperative to your success. So don't be afraid to change prism combinations, prism uh, alignments, um, or to change your abilities or gear or artifacts. Uh, change up your artifacts before you go in so that everything is as efficient as possible. What I like to do personally is uh, if I complete a void stage, I try and look at the, the one for the following day. And I, I see what the requirements are. I get to see what the stage looks like. I'll do a test run, which I, I usually do not win, but I can kind of feel it out. So I know the changes that I need to make for the following day. So try that out. Anyways, uh, this week we're going to have a bunch of void videos. Hopefully you guys uh, tune in for those. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so if you guys don't mind, subscribe for, for more awesome videos. Uh, make sure you like, share, all that type of stuff. Go check out the description. We have Facebook. We have Discord. Uh, we have the merch store. We have the Patreon page. Thank you very much to the Patreons out there. I, I appreciate it. Uh, you guys have no idea how much it means to me. So with that, guys, I, I hope you guys have a fantastic day.